Oh, hey girls, hi. So a few weeks ago, I interviewed another transgender person by the name of Jacob. It was an amazing interview, but unfortunately, the video quality did not come out so well. Um, and considering I went to Baltimore, there was no redo. I'm sorry for the video quality and also that it looks a little funky. I tried to make it as visually pleasing as possible. But if anything, just shut your eyes and listen. It's pretty interesting. Jacob has a lot of really cool things to say. I kidnapped a bug. There was also a lot of content to this interview and it was all so interesting that I didn't want to try and cut it up so that it was only like seven or eight minutes. Um, so I'll be placing some of that online in the next few weeks or so. Welcome to Welcome the Clam to Jam. Clam jam. Do your dance, do shake your clam at the clam jam. Do your dance, shake your clam. Right. Right. Welcome to my vagina. This is Jacob and Kiwi, who's a little mad at me for trying to make him dance. <laughs> Would you mind telling us a little bit about your transitioning? Mm -hmm. It's still happening. What the question means has changed, um, both from my personal standpoint, and I feel like most people that identify as queer, that question's meaning has changed. From my own personal experience, like I came out as trans um, when I was 18, I'm 31 now, so this was in 2001, 2001. Did you know even before that? <sighs> no. I knew I was uncomfortable. I knew not girl. That's how much I knew. Okay. I knew, um, that I didn't, I was identifying as a lesbian and that that wasn't really like, um, enough. <laughs> that wasn't like, a, yeah, that wasn't enough. It didn't really feel, I, I wasn't really connecting with the lesbian community. When I got to college, that was like when I first actually met other gay identified women. Um, and I thought it would be like, oh, this is, these are my people. And it just wasn't that way. Like I, I just felt, um, the kind of sex I was having was different than them, and um, just how I felt about my body when I had sex was like a huge part of it. And I just generally felt uncomfortable in my body. I mean, just being a teenager, I feel like most women are trained to be uncomfortable with themselves anyway. So I think that's, <laughs> that's pretty like, far. <laughs> I don't really know if that's a trans issue or just like how women are socialized. Right. We're supposed to just kind of feel like shit about ourselves. So, <laughs> like something's always wrong with you if right. you're born with a vagina. <laughs> you should feel like you should be trying to fix something about that. Um, so I don't really think that's a trans specific issue. Yeah, I came out, um, kind of really abruptly at like the gay club meeting um, while everyone was squabbling over whether or not we were going to add the word transgender to our name because um, the, the title of the group was LGBSU. I was like a board member and I wanted to call it the Queer Student Union because that covers like everything that covers people that are intersex identified, that covers like pansexual people and nobody was into that because there was a lot of older members of our group that were like queer is a bad word, we do not want to identify with that. I was, I basically like just blurted out like well I'm trans so you're just like being assholes. Is you're being not inclusive but- Is that when you like figured it out? When you kind yeah. of just blurted it out? Yeah. I mean I had been talking about it with um a, a person at the, that at the time identified as female and then we kind of after that <laughs> out eruption um, we like were talking more and we both went from identifying as lesbians to trans men so we went from being like a lesbian couple to like two gay dudes pretty much and that person is still a very important like friend to me and I at the time the gender binary was so important in discussions about trans stuff so I kind of just, I wasn't even thinking about how I thought about myself, I just was like, oh well, if I'm not a girl, then I must be a boy. And so I started on this path of like, well I have to immediately be on hormones, and I have to immediately get surgery, and I like, I gotta like, get to that other side. Right. Like, and it was a like, a very clear destination, and um, it was not received well <laughs> by, my, by my lesbian friends at that college, and I ended up withdrawing from school because I lost everyone that I loved, and they were all... Gay women. I feel like in LGBT, the T is kind of like lumped on. Do you yeah. feel like there's even kind of some reservations about the, like the gay community? Well, the trans yeah, I, I mean the transphobia that I've encountered has been way more from the gay and like people that are specifically gay identified and lesbian identified people, much more than straight people. That's crazy. Um, you would think that they would have more of a... <laughs> well, they're kind of like, you're too freaky, you're bringing us down, which like... I get it. Like, <laughs> you know, for people that 
want to be palatable for straight folks and are really latched on to this we're just like straight people thing like because they want to be accepted right then they want to be normalized adding like bisexuals and intersex and transgender that's like well that's like we'll get to you later yeah. let's get let's get gay rights going on let's get gay marriage let's get mm-hmm. gays in the military it, to me it's very similar to the women's right to vote where black women were well anybody of color was pretty much pushed aside aside. to be like well what let's get white women to vote first right and then we'll worry about you later and organizations like which is crap (laughs) yeah yeah and and organizations like hrc have definitely perpetuated that with presenting to the mainstream straight media like images of like the two bougie white guys with an Asian baby that they've adopted that like where that's like a very that's a class thing that's a that's a mm-hmm. class privilege and yeah. and queer people or people in the LGBT I never use that word but any people in the LGBT <laughs> umbrella like are all different classes and have are some of them have disabilities and some of them are immigrants and there's like an intersection of oppression there and most of the gay mainstream stuff is just like white like Will and Grace, Privilege. Ellen, <laughs> like, right? Like, yeah. let's, like make it palatable for the mainstream, like white heteronormy people, mm-hmm. and then then we'll worry about people of color and yeah. people that are, have disabilities and like that are deaf and like all that other stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so it sucked. I mean, I lost like, and also because I was not a butch woman, I was very much presenting as a femme person, which I think a lot of trans people try to be a hyper. Exaggerated exactly. version you know, of like version what they of their they're gender. supposed to be. Yeah. yeah um, and so everybody was like, "You're just this is just a phase." I mean, gay people were telling me that I wasn't really trans because I was not to them. I was not like a masculine woman. It's pretty crushing. And I left school and I came home and I went into a mental hospital for a while. I mean, I, I like felt like I must have been crazy and maybe I was just like making this up. Because so, everyone's telling you that you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the people that were supposed to be my community um, really were not supportive. And so I was diagnosed with gender identity disorder, mm-hmm. um, which a lot of trans people still are. But um, that's changed. As far as I know, that's changed a bit. That's more just diagnosed. It's not because you're trans. It's because you have, like, major dysphoria with your body, but anybody that was trans identified in the early 2000s, they were still under the umbrella of this is a mental illness, being transgender. So they give you that that diagnosis and then what? Um, well, some therapists will, I mean, basically it's like conversion therapy for gay people. They just like kind of, if you want to do that, um, you can kind of be retrained to do your gender to that be, you were assigned at birth. Right. Yeah. So I didn't do that. Spoiler alert. Fair enough. <laughs> um, End of the story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and nobody worries about gender anymore. We all have equal rights. <laughs> we all lived happily ever after. And everyone got to be what they wanted Every, to be. <laughs> yes. Men are walking down the street now in tutus and it's fine.